So, let's play a game. Um, a quick game. So, I don't know if you've known this, or it, it, it happened a while ago. I was in the transitioning of moving, so I really couldn't make a video about it, but this is definitely something that's worth talking about, especially to those who are uh, subscribed to this channel. So, uh, Crunchyroll, which is actually one of my favorite uh, apps to use in America, and Webtoon, of course, obviously, this channel is about comic web comics and webtoons. Um, they're actually collabing to hopefully make animated content of their actual series, which is actually really, really huge. If you read a lot of the top comments, if you read just read a lot of comments in general about webtoons, everyone's always asking for their favorite webtoon to be an anime or animated series. It's, it happens all the time. It is more prevalent probably actually reading the book itself and this is actually something to talk about like what do you want um to be animated um as a webtoon or as an anime or what do you want to be seen you know come to life i mean it's always really amazing to see like your favorite book or novel come um into life but there are a few things that you know we should be concerned about you know, whenever stuff is adapted from like a book and everything, my biggest concern is that it's true. Well, not my concern. A lot of people's concerns is that it's true to the manga. It's true to, you know, like the content, the original content that is created of, which in my opinion, I have no problems with, I would say. Um, my problems thereof come with it just has to be a good story and it has to make sense. I am a pure anime watcher, so I rarely read manga for a long period of time. Um, being in Japan kind of just pushes me to read more kanji. But um, I never really cared much about, um, you know, if it was true to the manga or not. There was only one series that I actually cared about, but that's not a here nor there. And to be truthfully honest, like that's really all that matters. But I know it's a concern for a lot of people, so it has to stay true to um, the source material that is created from. But then also too, like I mean, is it going to be an anim animated short? Is it just going to be a full series? I mean, that's another. That's my concern too, because I get the collab is great, but it is concerned that animation takes a lot of time, effort and sadly money so your favorite short your favorite series might have an animated short it may not even be a full series i feel like more of the super popular or actually older veteran webtoons probably will get more of a full series than um, most other people like the closest we got to an animated series was noblesse which was uh, uh like an ova one shot so we may see a lot of that coming along so it may not even be you know, like full series. It may just be like animated shorts, which again is not bad because your series comes to life. But I think, you know, Crunchyroll and Webtoons are kind of will be disappointing, you know, the people that, um, you know, that, that their audience because everyone is seeing, oh, full series was like, oh no, you get this short. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. Um, but in this video also, I kind of do want to talk about maybe I'll say five. Yeah, five webtoon series that I would actually love to see um, and to become animated and to come to life. And the reason being will not only be because of personal preference, it would also be because I think it would just be good um, for the community. There are a lot of dark horse webtoons out there. And again, I'm going to really touch bases on those like really, really soon. Um, but I just feel like those need the time to shine to be seen because a lot of them are very, 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 very powerful. And honestly, they were they competed with some manga that I have read and even some anime series. So seeing them animated would be a pretty much of an amazing thing. But with that being said, let's get to uh, the review. So I think at number five, it's going to be Days of Hana. Um, I think Days of Hana really deserves an animated series. Um, Days of Hana is not only very mature for uh, audiences, but it's also very powerful, very heartwarming, very serious at times. Um, if you don't know Days of Hana, uh, Days of Hana is basically from the creator who wrote Orange Marmalade, which again, 
is an amazing series. You just have to check it out. Days of Hana is about a wolf named Haru. Well, werewolf to say, yes, half human, half wolf. And basically, it's a world in which werewolves are kept as pets and um, they basically serve, you know, a human being. They're basically like dogs. And but they talk and they can work, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But these werewolves are not given equal rights and they haven't been for a, a while. And Haru finds himself falling deeply in love with a girl named Hana, who's actually is his master, but also his childhood friend as well. And the story goes on from there. Um, I cut it that way because Days of Hana, all, it doesn't really tell, it tells a story about a love story, but also it's a lot of other like really powerful themes that even towards the end, I will tell you now, you just be prepared. Like if you read it up to like, episode 80 just be prepared because at some point in there it's going to get like super dark and you're just gonna be like what happened to this webtoon um but it talks a lot about prejudice racism um is it okay to love who you really want to love which whew, that's a powerful topic actually but not to make this a, a lecture um I just really feel that days of hana again just has a lot of those like really deeper themes that you really couldn't see in uh, like a, a, a reading state that it would be better translated into a series. And with that being said, I think really Days of Hana, but again, just because it's at the my low doesn't mean that it's any less or any more than others. The other series are absolutely amazing. So yeah, let's continue going down the circle. Uh, at number four would be Dice. Um, Dice is a very dark horse anime. Um, fun fact, um, actually, if you get this far to this video, the creator of Unordinary, everyone's favorite webtoon series, actually she was inspired by um, Dice. And Dice is very powerful. Um, again, it's very dark, and but it's very powerful. But again, it, and with me, it's about themes. And that's one thing I like about webtoons is these underlying themes. Like every content creator, has like their niche or like something that they want to convey and truly dice is a very epitome example of this uh dice is about um a utopian society in which high schoolers and even adults use dice to basically dice are basically like advanced money for plastic surgery health weight it's basically like if you had currency and that currency could do anything you want in your life. And that's basically what dice is. So people get dice and it basically becomes like a game. Quite funny. Um, and you can change a lot about yourself. You can gain superpowers. It, it, it's truly like amazing. But um, dice continues on in which um, the dice break out. Because it was only a select few. But then it spread to the whole school and basically like just schools of, of of korea and basically the world their world just goes into other absolute uh complete total chaos um the reason why i think dice should definitely get an animated series or something of some sorts is simply because like again it's a very mature series and i'm really aiming towards like the older audience because the anime community is growing like again we're getting old now <laughs> and so like i'm just gearing my my picks towards them but also too it's just again a lot of themes that you really just can't convey in a series like it would be really amazing to see it conveyed in an animated state um with that being said it's also just really good and it's very powerful now if you want to know about dice i actually made two videos about dice which i will actually put in the link below for real so and definitely check those out honestly dice is um a really good series but it's very underrated especially since shows like an ordinary and with may mage and the demon queen are rampant you know it really doesn't get that much of a chance to shine but it, it's truly on par with those series if not even better than those series i dare to say um, with that being said, my third pick would be Mage and the Demon's Queen. Um, I absolutely love this series um, for a lot of personal reasons. I, I think 
it, it goes to say without with that but also because one it's it's more funnier than um the other two series i've described and again if you want to capture your audience laughter or really getting to the point is two things you can do and definitely dyson days of Hanukkah do that to a t but making the demons queen has something really special about it and it just drew me in the moment I uh, started to read it. Um, Mage and the Demon's Queen, if you don't know, is about a cute young mage named Mallory. Mallory, um, basically everyone in their world is supposed to, is, is trained to kill the Demon Queen. Uh, basically there's a huge bounty on her head, everyone wants her dead. Like basically you get a lot if you kill the Demon Queen. There's a catch though. The best mage or the best adventurer in their school is deeply in love with the demon's queen so instead of it being a game to kill her it's a game to actually uh, get her in bed and the best part about it in my opinion is that it it leans towards the lgbt community and it does it so succinctly that no one even you don't even notice it like and i think that's a really strong point for the author that you have something that's like so like succinct and so powerful that like but you just make it so subtle and i think that's that's really strong like it, it's not it's not like overblown like hey look she's this it's like oh oh she's in love oh she's this and i think that's the very like strongest point of mage and demon's queen so um again like i just said you know it's it's funny, it's lighthearted, it's very cute, and I just think that would translate very well into uh, an animated series. Um, with that being said, like I feel like it can gear towards the younger community as well. Um, and yeah, I pretty much said everything that I need to say about Mage and the News Queen. I really would think it would benefit most than, you know, mode of the series that i even described here they're like regard it's not really about place it's it, it really just about how effective i think the series would do as an animated short or whatever they plan to do in um their series so uh we're down to two more so at number two honestly <sighs> you're probably gonna hate me for this yeah it would be unordinary and the reason why I would pick on ordinary is because I have to respect what it's done. Um, we rarely get like a series that links people together. Um, that's even in anime, and that's even in books. That's just a real life thing. And it, it was amazing to see the community really linking together um, with this series um honestly and i'm looking at it at that i do have a few things about unordinary that again i will make in later videos not even the ones i've made now but the fact that it was able to connect a series uh, or our community was pretty flipping amazing um if you when i went to c2e2 for their for the convention uh for the webtoon convention it was just a lot of people who were just very happy and they were all linked together and well and unordinary had a, a a good part to do in it and there were other series too like i feel major and demons queen is definitely one of these series that has linked a com communities together but also in the ordinary too just the mystery aspect of it all like i feel like orochan wasn't intending on it to be like that but the mystery aspect really got people drawn in and then because I feel like she lied about her, her her plot. That really worked too. Because John's always seemed like he had something to hide. And then it actually came out and it's amazing. Um, again, there are a few issues that I do have. And I'm going to say that over and over. Because I don't think that it gets so high up there for its content thereof. I do really, it's more out of respect. It's more the fact that if it connected people in um webtoons it can definitely connect people in an animated series and again that's mainly my reason why it's really really that up high now are there other series i could have put up here definitely definitely 
but I really am just thinking about the community and how the community will benefit. Because the purpose of my channel is not really to share what I love. It is also as a medium to connect other people. So yeah, it's all about connection over here, everyone. And at number one, yeah, it's Tower of God. <laughs> but hold on, hold on, stick with me here. Tower of God for tons and tons and tons of reasons. One, I know it's getting an animated series, but I do want to talk a little bit about why it it's number one for me. One, it's a veteran. Um, two, it's very similar to Hunter Hunter, which is my number two favorite anime of all time. I absolutely love Hunter Hunter. Um, if that manga creator would actually act right, it would easily take the number one spot of best shonen out there, even over Gintama. And I love Gintama, and Gintama is so amazing. But Hunter Hunter is definitely very superior in in retrospect. Um, again, and this series, like as it seems like it, the, the the audience base because of unordinary and other popular webtoons it's dying down just not slow, slowly but surely and it's such a great webtoon however it's definitely a webtoon that you you need to see animated you you want to see the fight scenes you want to see like the characters like the, the world of Tower of God is so complex and so powerful that it's like on, a book can only do so much. You need visuals at um, a certain point. And that is definitely something that like Tower of God would definitely benefit from um, that. It's not just about being my favorite webtoon. It's really about like, like if you liked Hunter Hunter, you would like Tower of God. Like you would without a doubt, in my opinion, like I take my word on it. If you love the, the structure of Hunter x Hunter, you're going to love the structure of Tower God because it's virtually the, the same structure. They literally have like a Kilia in, in, in there that just shoots electricity. Like it, it, it's Hunter x Hunter if the manga creator would act right. So um, yeah, um, a few honorable mentions. Honestly, I feel I'll just quickly, you know, go over with them. I feel that really should get a webtoon series. Um, I think Orange Marmalade should get a webtoon series. The Gamer, um, that's really good if you haven't checked it out, by the way. And it's gotten really good, um, even over the past couple of chapters. Um, good Day to Be a Dog, um, Siren's Lament, um, Untouchables, not Untouchables, Intangibles. Um, very, very amazing, uh, powerful, powerful series. And True Beauty. I'm only saying a few off the top of my head, so don't quote me um, on them. But I think these series will definitely benefit from becoming uh, sh shows and everything. All right, so that is my video about uh, the webtoon and crunch collaboration. Again, I think it's a good idea, but I just don't want this collab to be a dream that we can get shot down very easily for most people. Um, but again, what are your favorite webtoon series? Um, if you have a favorite, you know, put it at the comments down below. Um, like I said, they might actually look at this, actually. Um, like they found, webtoon found my channel at some point. So they might actually look at this. So I'm definitely gonna, um, you know, definitely your feedback might help, you know, in what they're deciding, even no matter how they're planning or maybe in the future. So definitely, yeah, put it down. Put it down in the comments below, communicate with it. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.